Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be remembering who the narcissist really is. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So post-narcissistic relationship, many times you will need reminders, reminders of who the narcissist really is. And this usually happens immediately after, let's say you were discarded or after the relationship ends. And also it happens throughout post-relationship, meaning years, decades afterwards. Now, will you have 100% assuredness that the narcissist is in fact a person that's not good for you? Absolutely. But there will be moments in time when you will be reflecting back and you'll say, huh, was it that bad? It was, believe me when I tell you. And you'll need reminders. That's why you tune into my channel to get the wisdom. Perhaps you've healed or perhaps you're well on the healing path. The point is you check in from time to time to get refreshers and to find out what else is going on and to remind you that in fact, yes, that it, that relationship did not benefit you. Now, you need to understand who the person really is and you need to understand who they were, meaning they were a person who was draining your energy. They were a person who was manipulating you. They were a person who most likely portrayed themselves to be one individual when in fact they were somebody else. That's the mask they wore. That's how they wanted to manipulate you when they entered the relationship. Bear in mind that throughout the length of the narcissistic relationship that you were in, it deteriorated over time. It never improved. Sure, you may have had a day or two or two of uh, euphoric stage or happiness. I, I understand that was probably around some event like the narcissist's birthday or something when they were super sky high on supply. But then it would dissipate after time. Remember those days? Yes. In the narcissistic relationship, you really if you really zoom out, just when you were being comfortable, just like this is when you were in the narcissistic fog or the devaluation stage, just when you would put your guard down because you just experienced, let's say, a good weekend, and you would be on cloud nine, you'd be really happy, and you'd be like, wow, this is good. The relationships actually took a turn for the better. This is good. What would happen? Boom, Monday morning, you would get a text or something about what you did wrong, you, or you would be blamed for something that you did or did not do or you would be being gaslit that in fact the weekend you just had, no, it wasn't that good, they didn't really enjoy it. In other words, remember, the narcissist was always trying to tear you down. If they wanted something from you, sure, they would put on a mask and try to manipulate you and weaponize certain things like, let's say weaponize resources or weaponize money or intimacy, whatever you wanna call it, but that was on purpose. It was to keep you in the push-pull to take you super high and drop you super low. So you were never certain of what was around the corner. That is a narcissistic relationship in a nutshell. There's no stability. There's no common ground. It is the narcissist way or the highway. And you learn this when you're in the narcissistic relationship. Getting back on track to the thumbnail, you remembering or reminding yourself who the narcissist really was, post relationship there will be moments in time when you're questioning yourself wow was it really that bad as i mentioned previously it was and it was probably worse on top of that let's say that you still need to see the narcissist for whatever reason say you share a child or you are they're in the family meaning you didn't marry them but they're a sibling or something many times people don't want to attend events that they if they know they're going to see the narcissist and i i understand that completely why would you put yourself in the proximity and or vicinity of a toxic individual, i.e. the narcissist? Because if you do so, let's say that, let's say it's a family function and you attend it and you know the narcissist is going to be there. Well, already you know you have a target on your back and most likely you won't enjoy the event the, the way you would if the narcissist weren't attending. But you can't control what you can't control and you certainly can't control if the narcissist attends that event and most likely they would attend the event because you're gonna be there. I hope you followed all that. But these things, we need to understand that any events that we attend, and if we know the narcissist will be present, we need to focus on what the event is and not focus on defending ourselves from the narcissist. You may say, well, Andrew, that's easier said than done. It's really not, it, 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 it's really quite simple. What you do is, let's say that you're attending a wedding and you know the narcissist has to, is going to be there. Let's say, let's say for this example, you divorce the narcissist and your child, your son or daughter is gonna get married and you have to attend the wedding. And the narcissist, your ex, is going to attend the wedding also. Well, 
I would attend the, the wedding if you if you feel inclined to do so, and my hope is you do, you attend it and you don't give the narcissist your energy. You utilize gray rock or go radio silent because they're gonna try to tear you down. They're gonna try and make that wedding or that event about them and try to disrupt your experience with that wedding. Really understand what I'm sharing with you. But you don't let that happen because now you're getting the wisdom on my channel and you're understanding that if you've healed properly and you're at the pinnacle of indifference or perhaps if you're getting closer to that, you can attend the wedding as this example illustrates and you should be focusing on the special day of your son or daughter, the union that's about to take place, not on giving your attention or energy to the narcissist. So why I said that is because many times people need reminders of who the narcissist really is. Well, I'll tell you right now who the narcissist is. They are an energy draining, blood sucking vampire, a person who wants to disrupt your beautiful energy. They want to steal your empathy, your love, your aura. They don't want you to see succeed. They never have wanted you to succeed. They wanted to use you as a money train. They wanted to use you as an ATM. They wanted to use you as a sounding board. They wanted to not be there for you when you were ill or sick. They did not want to, to, to nurse you back to health. They did not want you to discover who they were. They did not want you to understand that you needed to block them and go no contact and delete and remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them. They did not want you to understand that in fact they were wearing a mask. They did not want you to understand that they are a narcissist. They did not want you to understand that you have so much abundance and beauty within you and they tried to extract it from you for the length of the relationship. They didn't want you to ever heal, I can promise you that. They didn't want you to be living your best life, I can assure you that. They didn't think you would come through the fire and rise through the ashes like a phoenix and enter the third version of yourself, which is where you are right now, at least that's my hope, or you're getting closer to that when you flat out don't care about the narcissist. They didn't want you looking back on the relationship and saying, wow, I actually grew so much from that relationship. I'm a totally different person now, I'm changed. I now have boundaries. I can now say the strongest word in the English language, which is no. I no longer am a people pleaser. I no longer just give my energy and empathy and, and time to just anybody because they asked me to. Remember all these things. These are reminders for you. So when you were in the narcissistic relationship, what were you doing? You were the errand person. You were the person that paid the bills. You were the chauffeur. You were most likely the person who went to the store and grocery shopped. You were the organizer. You were probably the person that raked the leaves, did the laundry, cooked, cleaned, vacuumed. You were the person probably that planned vacations. Perhaps you were the person that paid for vacations. Perhaps you were the person who raised the kids. And, and probably now you can't even see the kids because of parental alienation. You probably also were a person that didn't want to quit on your vows or on the relationship. And you kept on giving the, the narcissist although back then you didn't know they were a narcissist, you were probably giving them do-overs, many of them. In other words, giving them new opportunities to change. They never did. You also introspected and thought, wow, is it just me? Am I the one? Do I need to see a therapist? Do I have problems? And you thought that you were not in a good state of mind. The truth of the matter is you were in a great state of mind when you entered the relationship, but the narcissist beat you down over and over and over again. They had you doubting yourself. They, they were blaming you for the relationship's non-success when in fact the truth was they were trying to rip the, the relationship apart when you were trying to maintain it by plugging up all the holes in the sinking ship that was your marriage. Understand all these things. That's why post relationship, let's say you did divorce the narcissist or you ended a friendship or have isolated or removed yourself from a toxic family individual member, family member. That's why many times after time has passed, these individuals will pop up out of the woodwork and they will say things such as this, I've changed, let's, let's move on, let's start again. Uh, I've, I've realized that I was not the best person and I wanna make it up to you. I understand that I really didn't find anybody nearly as good as you and I, I wanna get back in your good graces. I wanna make amends. They, they'll say things like this or maybe they'll come at you with the victim like, I didn't know how much I loved you or I didn't know how much I cared about you or wow, you know, we are family, we should stick together, things like that. When they say these kind of things, what that means is, number one, you've reappeared on the radar. Number two, they think that because time has passed that you will allow them to go back for another round of abuse and manipulation. And they also think that you haven't healed. 
keep this in mind, the narcissist doesn't believe that you're doing the inner work, that you're journaling, you're processing childhood wounds, you're growing, perhaps you're seeing a therapist, you're consuming videos, but most importantly, you're getting educated on what they are. I said what they are, remember that. This is a good thing because you're now identifying that going forward, post-narcissistic relationship when you have healed, you understand that you don't have time for this kind of behavior and that you tolerated it in the past, maybe for a day, a week, a month, decades, who knows, maybe even a lifetime up until this video and this is the first video you're ever consuming it. And if it is, God bless you, you're amazing, you're beautiful. What I'm sharing though is you need reminders of who these people were and or are or who this individual you're thinking of was and or is. They're a person that will always try to play on your heartstrings. They will always try to come at you from a different angle and get you to drop your guard so they can enter your life again. They're always thinking that they are smarter than you. They're always thinking that they can get one over on you. And they're always thinking that you haven't healed or changed or that you will allow them back into your life. And I'll tell you why the reason that is, is because up until now, most likely you did let them back into your life. And if it's a pattern, if, if it's happened more than a couple times, then they know, okay, I'll just wait a little more time and I'll get them when they're vulnerable and I'll strike up the relationship again and we'll go back for some more abuse, whether it's verbal, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, physical, whatever it is, that's what they think. And you may say, well, Andrew, you're being a little difficult there. No, I'm not, it's real. It's exactly what these people do. They don't wanna build you up. Think about this before I close the video. Really think about this, and this should send the message home loud and clear to you. Did the narcissist ever apologize to you? I mean, a heartfelt, genuine apology. Did they ever look you square in the eyes and tell you that they loved you or that they made a mistake? Did they ever tell you that, you know what, they want to improve and that they're sorry and that they understand that they hurt you? No, they didn't do any of those things. With the exception, maybe they told you they loved you a few times because they were wearing the mask and that's probably, they told you that after you told them that and they're just trying to mirror it back to you. But did they actually love you? Absolutely not. My point is the narcissist can only change one thing and it's the mask they wear. That's it. They are incapable of introspection and we now know that. So if you have to see the narcissist sometime in the future, meaning at a family event or something, just remember, don't give them your energy. Gray rock, don't, do, don't say anything. Don't tell them anything about you, certainly and I would limit or minimize your exposure to that individual, and I would be attending that function and being present at the function, in other words, celebrating whatever that event is meant to be, whether it's a wedding, whether it's a family get together, who knows, but you should be there in the moment if you're strong enough to go there, but you don't wanna give the narcissist the time of day. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great afternoon. Stay true, stay blessed, continue to become awakened and aware and understand we all need reminders. Post-narcissistic relationship, there are times you're gonna need a reminder like, was it that bad? Was it really that challenge? Yes, it was. Just understand right now, it was. That's why you're on the channel. And think about it. When you were discarded, if you were, think about how low in your life you were. Think of what you had to do to put yourself back together. Think about how you were isolated and there was no one around you. No one came knocking on your door to save you you had to do it yourself. These are reminders you need to understand. So guys, that's it. That's the video. I hope you liked it. I love doing it. And remember, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. God bless you. I love you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye, you guys. Have a great day. Bye.